What's up, Instagram? Getting a lot of comments since I came out as being Vi Curious. That's V-I as in vaccine industry curious. And I wanted to take some questions from you guys about it. If you haven't heard of being Vi Curious, it's one of those things where you're not vaccine promiscuous because you won't just drop your pants and let anyone stick anything in you because they tell you it's good for you. But you're not anti-vax either because maybe you liked your tetanus vaccine. I actually almost died of tetanus about five years ago. I got real tetanus from a rusty nail on my farm. I hadn't had my vaccine updated for tetanus. And I'd go to the hospitals within 24 hours of probably dying from it. Uh, so they had to give me uh, immunoglobulins, in which they flew in on a helicopter. So yeah, I kind of keep my tetanus vaccine uh, up to speed, but I don't get the diphtheria and pertussis that come with it because those are not good for you. So I am vi curious. I'm kind of think maybe it's okay to be selective about what things I insert into my body. Um, but you know, I don't have to be an, either an anti-vaxxer and I don't have to be one of the, oh my goodness, that wasn't me in case you're wondering. I'm on a ferry, check this out. Oh, we're pulling out, which seems probably like 10 more minutes of coverage. I'm on a ferry from um, basically Vancouver to Victoria where I live. So uh, Anna Capco says I need to look into how tetanus works. My wife's an ER doctor trained at the Karolinska Institute who suggested that I might want to go uh, to the hospital when about four days after I had a puncture wound, a deep puncture wound from a rusty nail <laughs> where animals had been. Pretty sure that was tetanus. Uh, all right, Johnny, what are the potential downsides of the COVID vaccine? Seems like the risk reward is pretty damn good. You know, that's the thing. You're probably not gonna die if you get the, the vaccine. <laughs> You're probably not gonna die if you get COVID either. And that's why I'm curious and I'm really not ready to make a decision here because I know that they lied to us about the number of people who died from COVID. It's complete garbage. I also know personally and anecdotally many more, tons of cases where people have really bad things happen right after the vaccine, but it wasn't the vaccine because it couldn't be the vaccine because that's what we already know. Neither of those is actually science. So we're sitting here with garbage data and we're getting a lot of bullying and shaming about masks and about uh, injections and things like that. And it's complete not okay. Like I, I have to be free to be me and live my true self, which is I'm vi curious. You know, I've got to make a decision. <laughs> so if you're vi curious, do a post on it, man. <laughs> Hashtag it, it's hilarious, <laughs> but it's the truth. It's okay to be in the middle. And if you feel alone, everyone is in the middle, except for about 5% of whack jobs who are on either end of the extreme. And if you're running around telling, you have to get a vaccine and wear a mask to protect me, dude, you set yourself on fire to keep me warm and tell me how that works out for you. So we're not gonna go there. And then that was like, you know, I will never have a vaccine on any, well, okay. I would rather be friends with you because at least you're not telling me what to do. And I respect your right to not get any medical treatment you don't want. Like that's just medical freedom. Uh, so however it is, that's where I stand. And I hope you guys are with me. You guys want to take a, what kind of car do I drive? I am driving a company car. I think this is a Hyundai Sonata Sport. It's actually pretty fast, uh, but it's not what I drive. It's what I drive over the border. Cause if I fly over the border, they give you three days of hotel quarantine and 14 days of quarantine, even with three negative COVID tests during the quarantine. Cause Canada is wacky right now. Go Canada. I really like Canada except for that stuff. Marilee says you should be hyper vigilant about what you put into your body, especially if you have to pull your pants down. That's what I always say. Cause that's where they inject you. It's some of them anyway. <laughs> Hello, can you come work for me? I don't know, maybe you have jobs on the DaveAsprey.com upgrade thing. Wexworld, I'm not worried about dying from COVID. I'm worried about long haul syndrome. You know what? That is fantastic. I am grateful that long haul syndrome exists. Now you guys might be pissed off about that. Here's why. Long haul syndrome has existed for freaking ever. Get Epstein-Barr virus get toxic mold exposure, which turns into chronic fatigue syndrome. These are people dealing with the same stuff that's been happening to a substantial percentage of the population for a very long time. You get sick and you don't get better. You know what? We know how to hack that. There's a lot of stuff we know. So the first thing you would do if you had a long haul problem, and by the way, by saying this, I hope this, this video stays up. Every time you talk about stuff like this, you don't really know. So number one, as soon as you get COVID, you should start reducing your mast cell exposure because it looks like overactivated mast cells are part of the problem. How do you do that? This is gonna sound really radical, okay? Pepsid AC, H2 histamine blocker. 
Claritin, H1 non-sedating histamine blocker. If I got COVID, would I be taking two peps in the morning, two at night, and a Claritin in the morning, Claritin at night? Yes, I would. Do I have a double blind clinical blah, blah, blah study? No, I know how mast cells work and I don't want overactivated mast cells by this stuff. Would I do all the other natural stuff? Would I do ozone? Would I do a bunch of other things? Heck yeah, I would. Would it cure it? No. Would it mean that you're less likely to have a ton of symptoms? Yes. And that's what we're doing with, we're always playing with probabilities, right? So there are dozens of ways to heal from the things that are happening here. And we're gonna have to talk about them as a country and as a species. And we're gonna have to say, oh, that's weird. You can heal in, thing, in ways that don't involve drugs. Maybe things that involve this weird thing called biohacking where you change the environment around you and inside of you so you have full control of your own biology. Hell yeah, that's exactly what we're gonna do. In fact, I'm spending all of my time right now building out Upgrade Labs where we're showing you the things that make your biology more resilient. Let's scroll down and ask some more questions for you. You've taken it, and I'm guessing you mean the, the vaccine. Some shoulder pain for several hours, more at ease seeing family as risk factors. And this is from Para Mendoza. You know what? I totally respect you, brother. Like, it's okay to get the vaccine. It's okay to not get the vaccine. And just to be at peace and be kind and loving and supportive of people who do it or don't do it. Like it's, it's actually okay. And you can be friends with people who think the vaccine is evil. And you can be friends with people who think that if you don't get the vaccine, you're evil, except they won't be friends with you. That's what I want you guys to know. Just be nice to people. It doesn't freaking matter. Five years from now, you're, no one's gonna care, right? Don't destroy a friendship. It's just not worth it, right? So just that middle ground, that equanimity, we're, we're all safe. And yes, we might be slightly less safe, but you know what I'm not doing right now? I'm not wearing my seatbelt on the ferry, right? Maybe I'd be slightly more or less safe. I'm safe enough. Right, and you gotta tell yourself that every night, you're safe enough, because you have a bed to go to bed in, which most of humanity hasn't had for most of human history, because you have both legs, for God's sake. So, sometimes you just gotta take a step back and realize we're not as, it's not about fear. So, I wanted to share that with you guys, and I also wanted to share this view with you guys, because, well, it's pretty epic. I got the front row seat on the ferry. Didn't even have to leave my car. All right, couple more questions for you. Still got a few bars. Once we get out in the water, it won't be a problem. Uh-oh, Jesus was vi curious and got the shot and got extremely sick, 103 degree fever and brutal shakes, sick for a week. Sorry, brother. Um, you know, if I was gonna get the shot, I might look at also that histamine thing. I don't have clear mast cell activation evidence from, but it almost has to do that. Um, I would also do the other stuff like glutathione, calcium deglucurate, supporting detox pathways, intermittent fasting, stuff like that. All right, Anna is totally vicarious. Join the tribe. I kind of feel like we need our own flag now. Um, you're suffering from um, mild, probably mold poisoning now. Uh, all right. Oh, Liz is saying, I've been saying this about post-viral syndromes. It's not new. Hopefully they'll listen to them. Yeah, post-viral syndromes are a part of humanity. By the way, you know about 8% of your genome comes from viral infections? <laughs> not that you've had, but that humanity's had. So viruses are always from the environment editing um, our genome, it's one of the things interesting, you go swimming in the ocean, there's a lot of viruses in there. They're not bad for you. They're just basically environmental adjustments you can do. A Cirque Lala, what about getting exemptions? You have to travel a lot worried because of your job, but you're also vicarious trying to figure it out. Exemptions aren't based on, on vaccine. Exemptions are for people who travel into Canada who are Canadian or residents like me. I have a green card in Canada. Um, I was granted an exemption this time because of the nature of the work I was doing in the US. So when you come to the border, you have all your paperwork in good orders. I got the, the nasal swab. By the way, the nasal swab was a non-event. I was expecting to have to swallow the thing like all the way back. Why do people whine about that? It's not even that big of a deal. So I got tested in the US. I don't have COVID. And um, well, um, they said I was pregnant. I don't know if that matters. Uh, but then uh, I came to the thing, just be nice to the border guy, explain what you're doing, have a letter from your employer, from an attorney and a bunch of other paperwork. And then they decide right there on the spot whether your trip, that trip was exempt. And uh, I think they really re appreciate having good data. It says, oh look, I don't have COVID. So there's really no, no risk. If you're not exempt, by the way, if you guys think it's rough in the US, three days in a hotel, 14 days at home, and they come and visit you randomly, often several times, and give you uh, three more COVID tests. And even if you pass all of them, you still have 17 days of not seeing your kids. That sucks. Alan Baum Bauman, hey, Dr. Alan. Look, like my hair, Alan did my hair. He's pretty good at that. All right, pretty good. 
Um, thanks, Alan. Uh, say best in the country. And he says he's looking forward to the Orlando Biohacking Conference. Guys, go to biohackingconference.com. We are gonna meet in person in Orlando in September, thousands of us. And we're gonna be able to do things, this weird thing is called hugging. I remember it, it has something to do with oxytocin and stuff like that. I love to see you guys there. Biohacking Conference, I'm gonna be on stage. We're gonna have Dr. Mercola there and some other really, really big experts. Everyone's just raving to get out there. Sorry, I'm Tony Stark, look at me talk, look at this. <laughs> that was so unplanned and so funny. <laughs> Green got the H1N1 vaccine January 10th, 20 minutes after collapse, kept collapsing. Oh, then you got POTS. You're still sick, but you can walk and function. I just want to be really clear, Greens. That was not caused by the vaccine because vaccines can't have side effects. Therefore, that was not a side effect. It was just coincidence. Okay, let's be really clear. You guys see how the science might have been skipped a little bit there? Um, by the way, postural orthostatic hypotension... And what you're talking about there is something that is also caused by toxic mold and something I've dealt with actually genetically since I was a kid. So I've had low blood pressure and it sucks because your brain doesn't get enough. It's manageable though. Um, there's pharmaceutical lifestyle and this is going to sound weird if you know about it, Greens. Get squeezy pants, not the kind that we use at Upgrade Labs, which are like air filled and move lymph, but actually like Spanx. <laughs> they make special ones. I can't tell if you're a man or a woman, um, but they make basically um, um, really good ones. I wore the socks when I traveled, uh, but Nick Foles, uh, the MVP Super Bowl champion, uh, who's become a friend who's been on my show, texted me and actually said, Dave, no, wear the pants. I'm like full on pants, like like pantyhose kind of? He goes, no, they're like more sporty. And uh, it's something like TKO or HK2 or something is the brand. But I wear stretchy pants when I fly. I flew down on this trip. You get off the airplane if you're wearing compression pants and a compression shirt, you feel like yourself. It's freaking amazing. If you have pots, wear them all the time. Uh, oh, vaccine remorse from Armstrong, from Cynthia Armstrong. All right. Oh, I hit a new cell. I got five bars now. Catherine says, Upgrade Labs coming to Toronto. We are franchising Upgrade Labs, guys. I'm looking at, um, well, my goal is 100 locations signed within a year, and we've got so much interest. So upgradelabs.com slash franchise, if you're thinking about that, if you have some experience with franchising. Hey, there's Jody Streetelmeyer. Hey, cuz, be kind, I like that. You notice how guys, how many people are screaming and yelling right now? Like, in the comments? Nobody, right? So what happened, why? Well, because I'm in the middle, right? And that's cool, thank you for all the love. Um, you can do the same thing. And if someone does get wacky and scream, it's the 2% on either side of everything that mess up the internet. So there's this really cool thing. It takes you half a second. It's called ban delete. When you ban someone, they can't see you and get mad at you anymore. And delete, no one sees all their like coming and crapping in your living room. So I do ban and delete people. Not very many. I don't have to. But when someone's just plain rude and they're abusive to others, like I'll delete you. If you are abusive to me, I'll probably just make fun of you back. <laughs> <laughs> because it's more fun. Uh, Keto Club, am I going to London in September? No, I'm no longer associated with the Health Optimization Summit, uh, but I might come to London. My conference is going to be on the 17th in Orlando of September. The up upgrade, uh, let's see, biohackingconference.com for tickets on that. Um, yeah, um, M MV says, let's take half the money spent on the COVID vaccine, make an anti-sugar vaccine. Okay, guys, let me just do a little bit of thought study with you. What if you could take an mRNA vaccine that meant that your body would no longer overreact to sugar and it wouldn't be bad for you and you wouldn't get diabetes? Would you be willing to consider that? I would. I'd want to see the side effects and some clinical trials in three or four years of good data at least. But let me tell you, if you can use mRNA editing to take out risk of diabetes, cancer, Alzheimer's, wow maybe that's worth considering because that kills a lot of people every single year. In fact, a lot more people than the current thing we're all focused on that we spent eight trillion in the US alone on. Hmm, so I'm not opposed to these things. I wanna see the science and I wanna go after the big killers and I want a choice. My body, my choice. It's almost like we've heard those words before. This applies to all human beings right now and it's a big deal. It's a really big deal. Um, let's see. Am I single, lovely? I am not. My wife, Dr. Lana, she makes me wear these shoes. I don't know if you can see them. These are my male birth control shoes. Every time I travel, I have to wear them. It's, it's ridiculous how that works, but see, so you can see how effective they are, right? 
They're also really comfortable. All right, Anna says, not against the vaccine, just not feeling that you need to follow, that you need to take it. It's, it's okay. If you guys, uh, so if you haven't seen the post before this, this thing on my page about being vicarious, it's actually the most popular post I've, I've written and I've written some really popular ones. Um, what am I driving, Rob? What I drive at home is a BMW 550i that is 10 years old and it's the best car ever and it has 39,000 miles because I never drive anywhere. I walked through my farm garden to my office and I drive my kids to school every now and then and it's fast and it's awesome and I can't make myself get rid of it to buy a Tesla because why would I do that? I'd rather spend money on biohacking. <laughs> I'll get more stem cells. Uh, but what I'm driving now is a company car for 40 years is in my neuroscience company. It's a... Uh, Hyundai Sonata Sport, and believe that the Sport, this thing, I have it on good authority that may or may not have happened on this drive is that it'll hit 100 without even sweating. Hair loss prevention tips from S. Lo S. Loy. You know what? Go to Bulletproof Radio and just search for hair, or search for Alan Bauman, B-A-U-M-A-N. He commented earlier. Um, he's the guy who helped me with it. I actually have moved 10,000 follicles to the front because I'm doing pretty well. All the guys in my family are bald early on. Um, and so I have lots of my own hair, which is ridiculous. Um, and I don't have the receding I did, but the stuff on top here, it's doing pretty well. Um, and it's because Alan's tips. So we go through that in the podcast. Now I messed up my hair. It also, I need a haircut badly. <laughs> but oh well, that's all right. Epstein Barr is uh, President Trump's legal counsel from Sage Wellbeing. Epstein-Barr, also known as EBV. Epstein-Barr virus is a very common virus um, that is associated with um, chronic fatigue syndrome and all sorts of lingering health problems that look a lot like long haul COVID, but not exactly, but, but pretty close. Serious question, where did I get this shirt? Um, I actually love this shirt. This is my travel shirt. It's like stretchy and synthetic. It doesn't wrinkle. And I think it's an ex officio, um, but it's got metal buttons. I, I like weird buttons on my shirts because I'm weird. And um, so it's like my airplane shirt and you can wear a compressor under it, it's cool. Um, long, I'm great, keep up the great job. Don't be a lab rat. Actually, I am a lab rat. I'm like the world's biggest lab rat. I've had more stem cells than anyone on earth because you know what I'm trying to do? I'm, I want a vaccine against death, okay? I'll take that, like aging. I'll take that, right? I don't see the risks for it, but see the risk of dying is 100% if you're alive right now and that's fucked up. I would like the risk of dying to be reduced, at least if you're not over 200 or something. Let's talk about vaccines for that. And maybe the risk reward is there, but reducing a risk of something that is already far, far less than 1%, I don't really know. We need a flag, says Bill. Why am I wearing those glasses all day? Um, interior, so these are True Dark. This is a company I started. These glasses block 75% of blue. They are not blue blocking glasses. Blue blocking glasses during the day are bad for you because you don't get any light. I'm wearing these right now because if you look out here, it's super cloudy. It feels like fluorescent lights outside. So there's just a lot of glare, which is why I'm wearing them. Otherwise I wouldn't during the day. At night, I switched to the sunset lenses, which are patented. I wrote the patent. They do three more colors than blue blocking. So blue blocking is not enough at night and too much during the day. That's why I do that. Uh, we got uh, Hilda from Jakarta. I love that. Lori, the, the U.S. is forcing, or the IU, who's that? Because IU, oh, some university is forcing your son to take a vaccination before his junior year. I'm sorry. The good news, take a deep breath. Your son's probably going to be fine. Probably. And it's the probably. Um, and I would write some sort of scary letter to the university that says they have liability for anything that happens to him. <laughs> See what happens. Um, all right. You're sick always, number one thing you'd suggest taking. Let me suggest you read the Bulletproof Diet. I was sick always. I was on antibiotics for 15 years, every month. Strep throat, sinus infections, obesity, arthritis at 14, chronic fatigue, fatigue syndrome in my mid 20s, um, all kinds of stuff. It's all gone. You can do it. It's, 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 there's, that's, it's in there. Uh oh, Maureen is coming out as vicurious as well. <laughs> How are my mitochondria doing? My mitochondria are dancing right now. All right. 10 people need to wake up, says Guy. 10,000 doctors have declared to, to stop the killer vax. People are dying and the rest of humanity are brainwashed by the media. Not okay to take this bioweapon vax. Here's the deal, man. The vast majority of people who've taken the vaccine aren't dead. 
It's just a fact. They might have long-term problems. We don't really know. The vast majority of people who've gotten COVID aren't dead. That's why COVID is not a pandemic. In 2004, they changed the definition of pandemic. It used to be a rapidly spreading disease that kills a lot of people. Black death killed 70% of people. Ebola kills 30% of people. Those are pandemics. You get a vaccine for one of those and it's going around, I'll be the first in line, okay? Clear in present danger. <laughs> in 2004, they changed the definition to be rapidly spreading without a lot of death. And that enabled, in 2004, Rumsfeld to make a billion dollars forcing Tamiflu to be purchased by countries because it could be used. So they forced a stockpile. My wife is a medical doctor in Sweden at the Karolinska Institute of all places, which is a very well-respected medical school globally. And her boss came in and tossed a, a little box of Tamiflu to everyone. All the doctors said, here you go. Sweden was forced to buy these against our will by some international EU or WHO thing. And they all laughed. He's like, throw it in your desk drawer. <laughs> we aren't gonna need it. Because Sweden actually said they wouldn't buy I think it was $8 million worth of Tamiflu because they, they were supposed to buy enough for all their population. They said, no, because the data doesn't support it. Funny, Sweden had a different perspective on COVID as well until their own citizens got scared by the media and then they all started doing what everyone else does. Uh, Pinky says you have black mold poisoning. Go to moldymovie.com. It's a documentary I filmed. It took a lot of time and energy to do it. It is free. It is a gift. Everyone needs to see that documentary because there's a hundred million structures that have mold. By the way, you live with black mold and you get COVID, you're not gonna like what happens because the mold's already taking you down a few notches. You gotta have clean air. It's so important. How did I get those glasses? TrueDark.com. I'm the founder of the company. These are different than blue blockers. They work way better. Um, Let's see. First dose, got fever, swelling, arm second shot, severe chills, fever two to three days, horrible side effects. Uh, I hope you feel better. By the way, I was with my parents. My parents are vaccinated. They both felt a little cranky, but they were okay. They decided to do it. They locked themselves in their house for a long time uh, until they felt like they were safe. Like, it's okay. I love my parents. <laughs> I'm happy they got vaccinated because they feel safe. Happy if they don't get vaccinated. Like, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> and that's how you got to be about this. All right. Alan says, my hair's looking good. Thanks. Well, you did all the work, man. All right. What can you say to people who hound you about getting vaccinated when you don't want to? The easiest thing to do, if someone, okay, you got to remember this part. You're going to want to like cut this out and put it on your little story share thing, whatever. Okay. If someone says you have to get vaccinated, there's two things you, even better, are you vaccinated? There's two things you can say. One of them is, oh, I did. And then they go away. The other thing you can say is you can say, How's your STD test? And just start talking about vaginal warts or whatever other super uncomfortable subject there is until they go away. Um, you know, you could also tell them you have projectile gonorrhea, which is one of my favorite made up diseases of all time. So bottom line is like, you wanna get into my medical records? And if it's your employer or some other person with some sort of pseudo authority, usually working for a mall, here's what you say. You say under HIPAA, which is the Medical Privacy Act with all kinds of bureaucracy and legal and financial implications. Under HIPAA, you are not allowed to ask me about my medical status. So now you've pitted one bureaucrat against another bureaucrat, and that's like putting like red and black ants together, they fight each other, it's so awesome. So anytime you have a bureaucrat, you point another one at them from a different branch. Or you go, oh, what about the Americans with Disabilities Act? They're not allowed to ask you what your disability is. They're not allowed to ask you about your medical status. So you can have all kinds of fun with people. Like, it's okay, right? But if someone's hounding you like, just, oh yeah, I got vaccinated twice. I did the J&J &J and I did the Pfizer just in case. Did you feel better? And then you just don't talk about it. All right, Dream Sparkle Shine, do you want to go to the conference? Uh, come to the conference. Guys, if you go to the Biohacking Conference, September 17th, biohackingconference.com. I've been putting these on for eight years. We started with 100 people in a bar running electrical current over each other in San Francisco. Now we're going to be in Orlando. And it's a place where you can actually like touch people and just like be, be normal. And um, it's going to be thousands of people and it's going to be so fun. Uh, I'm really excited. Uh, we've already got, uh, I think probably about a couple thousand people signed up and it's, it's going to be like no other conference and we're good at these. Um, Dr. McCall says it's the best conference he's been to in his life. And he says that publicly quite often. And of course he'll be there speaking as well as tons of other cool people. Ignite your strength. Why not quercetin instead of claritin to stabilize mast cells? You should take quercetin on a 
pre-vaccine or post-COVID or pre-COVID, whatever sort of thing. Quercetin is a mast cell stabilizer. Claritin is a histamine H1 blocker. They work together. What is that pendant? If you listen to Bulletproof Radio uh, with Nassim Haramin from the Resonance Academy, it is a quantum entangled, um, a quantum entangled uh, piece of quartz crystal, I think. There's this giant machine they use, so all the molecules in it are resonating at exactly the same time, which is kind of cool. Crazy Kate, yeah, Orlando, biohackingconference.com, Dave Stark. All right. Um, oh, good. Rise up. Uh, well, Sunshine did fantastic with Pfizer and you have Lyme and mold issues. Um, good for you. See, it, it, she didn't die. See, that's the thing, right? Taken, yeah, so when women in haven't taken the vaccine, I won't. Awesome. Like, totally fine, both of you. <laughs> it, it's just, it's all good. All this, like, alarmism and the news poking stuff, you just have to, you have to chill. And if the U.S. wants a vax stamp to let people in, I'm sure that they'll sell them on the dark web. It's probably e easy to buy as ketamine. Um, how to stabilize mast cell activation? Well, stabilizers are quercetin and vitamin C. Um, that's uh, um, that's one of those things. And by the way, the other thing to say to vaccine uh, harassers is if the vaccine works, you should be safe. And then you stop. And then they sit there and their little brain like swirls around inside them going, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> so you can do that. Um, Suraj, if I'm, if you're not taking, or if I'm not taking the vaccine for COVID, does that mean I won't take vaccines for future viruses to come? Absolutely not. I'm vicarious, which means I'm selective about what vaccines I take. I decide when I take them. I decide which ones I take in what form for what risk conditions. I will tell you if I was going to go, like I did a long time ago, I went to Nepal and China and Tibet. Right. And, and I trekked and I was in remote parts of the country and there's malaria. I took, I didn't do the, some kind of vaccine. I don't think they have a malaria vaccine. They didn't back then, but I took some, some pharmaceuticals for that. So if I was going to go somewhere where there was a deadly disease or permanently disabling with high infection rate, I'll get a vaccine for that because the risk reward is worth it. But I'll tell you guys too, my wife, doctors without borders, she, she likes that kind of stuff. She got all the vaccines at once, which they require for going and working in Africa. And she couldn't work because she got meningitis. The lining of her brain swelled up. It took about six months. And her memory to this day, that was many years ago, is still not as good as it was. Right? So, no, vaccines are not safe. They're not dangerous either. If they were dangerous, we'd all be dead because most of us have had a vaccine at some point in our life. See, that's the thing. They're a little bit dangerous. And you get to pick how much danger you want to face to prevent another risk. And when anyone else says they have a right to do that, the appropriate response from someone, not me, is going to be a high-speed lead vaccine because this is a freedom issue. It's a medical freedom issue. And I will tell you guys, the half-life of fat in the human body is two years. The half-life of collagen in the human body is seven years. That means every seven, in seven years, you replace half the collagen. Well, they look at half-life. How long does it take something to, to leave the body? Well, the half-life of guns is about 150 years. That means that all the guns in the U.S. will still be functioning 150 years from now. <laughs> and that was the way they set it up in the Constitution. Remember, guys, I live in Canada, right? I'm an American. But I'll just tell you, like, there's only so far that you can tell people they have to have things that are dangerous before the people who have dangerous things take action on that. And I hope to God's sake that it doesn't happen any time in my lifetime. Uh, but I'd be worried if I was walking around telling people that you're going to make them do things that they really don't want to do. Because that's not how it works, at least not in the U.S., right? Not calling for that to happen, to be really clear here. I'm concerned about that happening. So we got to step back. My body, my choice. And if they had just put that in the Bill of Rights and put it in the Constitution, medical freedom... We'd be living in a different different world right now. All right. Um, I'm going to scroll down and answer a few more questions. I can't believe we've had a, a service for all this. Look at that. All I have in front of me is water. And we've got a clean thing. Oh, do you guys want to see something funny? I'm exempt. I didn't have to quarantine this time because the Border Patrol said that. See all the big space around my car? That's because I'm dangerous. <laughs> so it's totally funny. Is it okay to take care of vitamin tabs if they've got good stuff in them? Um, who makes those glasses, said Booby? 
truedark.com, T-R-U-E, it's my company, and we've got a whole bunch of different styles. These work better than blue blockers uh, during the day because they don't screw you up. Oh, this is interesting. Uh, Lou Geffen says, you got the first fax and it reactivated your Epstein-Barr virus. I've heard this over and over, reactivation of other uh, viruses. Um, this is a concern. It's a risk, right? But here's the thing. Is reactivating your EBV going to kill you? Probably not. Is it going to lower your quality of life? Probably until you undeactivate it, right? So, hmm, it seems like it's not risk-free, but maybe it's worth the risk to you. And also maybe it's, you're like, okay, I'm going to take the risk because it lets me see my parents. It lets me see my kids. It lets me go to work. It lets me do something I love. That is a value to you. And it's okay to take a little risk to have a good time and love your life. It's called skiing and it's called skydiving. We're willing to do that. It's okay to take the risk of a vaccine because it lets you do something you love. It's okay. The joy of life is what we're here for, not to avoid death. Oh my God, I'm so afraid. I'm never gonna have fun again, but I might live. F that. I'm not trying to drop too many F-bombs. You bozo, says Mo. Thank you, Mo. I've been working on my clown nose. All right, scroll down some more. Have I done a combo ceremony from Wanderlust? You know, I was just talking with someone who's had it, who's, who's done it, had the lines on her arm. Combo is a toad venom that makes you hallucinate. I am doing so much work with uh, with Dr. Barry and with 40 Years of Zen. Like, I'm so dialed in right now. I haven't felt called to do a plant medicine in a while. Daniela, is Lyme really mold toxicity? 90% uh, of the time, yeah. I was diagnosed with Lyme disease. I ran a lab testing company with Dr. Lana and my wife that said I had Lyme, but I really had mold. And there's an interview on Bulletproof Radio, I'm forgetting the guy's name now, where we went through the genetic markers. If you think you have Lyme disease, watch Moldy Movie, the documentary, and treat your mold and watch what happens. The Joe I Know from Vancouver West End Coffee Meetup. Come to Victoria, man, on Tuesday is our grand opening of the Upgrade Cafe and Upgrade Labs in Victoria, downtown in Chinatown. So cool. Get outside with Stephen and Sherry. Stephen and Sherry, I fired my doctor. Sometimes you have to do that. I fired one a long time ago. He told me vitamin C would kill me. All right. Dancing mitochondria. Do I still take the drug for travel when I had to stay sharp? I think you mean if I was going to India or something and I was going to be looking at infectious tropical diseases, I would. I don't take modafinil if that's the drug you're thinking about on a regular basis. It's the limitless drug. I'm really well known for bringing that into the world of biohacking. I took it every day for eight years and I'm so dialed in without it. Um, it's it's just not necessary. I take other nootropics. Uh, Den Denny Logeremia, uh, I make your coffee every day from Brazil. That's awesome. I do too. <laughs> Rochelle, dancing mitochondria is that disco or techno dance step? Definitely techno. Um, there's not that many disco songs my mitochondria really groove to. Uh, Green's is uh, freaking out because of mold toxicity root cause of pots. It's not always the root cause of pots, it's just the most common cause of pots. There's some genetic things that can do it. Those glasses are so unnatural. You know, Keith, if you're indoors, these glasses make it more natural. Has COVID made me more Republican because they've been against shutdowns? All right, this is from a healthy so it's like, look, I don't give two shits about political parties. If you are so dumb that you're going to say, I have to be in this group or this group when both groups are full of crap and don't have your interests at heart, how about four of these, whatever Democratic things are good and five of these Republican things are good? Where, what's the name for that? It's like being vicarious. Like, I'm in the middle. Like, some things make sense, some things, make sen some things don't make sense but neither party has your back. And that's why the party system is fundamentally broken. So you don't have to be in either party. All right. How do I get strep and arthritis better? Number one is mold. If you have chronic strep, you've got a mold problem. Number two, listen to my recent podcast. Oh, uh, guy's name is John Trapp, Tap, John Tap, I believe. Uh, but it's on BLIS probiotics. He spent 30 years searching for good strep that fights and kills bad strep. And there's little lozenges you can suck on that will keep from getting strep throat. It's epic. Ozone therapy is good too. All right, I've ever met Anthony William. Uh, isn't he like the psychic guy? Is that thinking, you're thinking of the medical medium? Someone tell me if that's what we're talking about. 
life with less, if you're prone to blood clots, you should deal with that whether or not you get a vaccine. And the number one thing to do for that would be serapeptase, which is a silkworm enzyme. I've been taking it for 25 years because I am in the top 7% genetically high risk for stroke and heart attack. And uh, because I used to have blood that clotted almost instantly before I was 30. What that stuff does um, is it breaks up something called uh, fibrinogen, which is a precursor to thrombin, which gives you blood clots. So I'm giving you guys all the good stuff. By the way, if you like this conversation, if you go to ourupgradecollective.com, the Upgrade Collective is my mentorship group. I have a call like this every two weeks with hundreds and hundreds of people where you can ask questions and they get to be live guests on the podcast and ask the guest questions. So the Upgrade Collective is where I'm teaching all my books in lectures and you get conversations like this all the time. It's pretty cool. Marine, which glasses would help with floaters? Your son has floaters. Floaters are usually a sign of some sort of chronic uh, infection. I, I look at Bartonella for things like that. If, it, if there's a lot of them, more than is natural. Glasses probably won't help. There is a laser surgery for floaters, but it's not without risks. I wouldn't do it yet, but it's gonna get better. Uh, where can you find my rapid fat loss protocol? If you go to daveasprey.com, I'm pretty sure the rapid fat loss protocol is on there. All right, scroll down some more. I love it that we're actually getting to have a longer call um, here on the ferry. You guys want to see the view? And actually, I don't need my glasses anymore because we lost all that weird bright cloud cover. If you guys never go to the Pacific Northwest, there's this thing where you have thin clouds and bright sun and it looks just like a fluorescent light and it just sucks. Uh, here we go, says Bill Brandt. Thanks for giving you a middle ground to stand on. You've become kind of grumpy about vac vaxxer, anti-vaxxer crap. I now have a middle ground. So you're vicarious. There is a huge industry right now in just making people pissed at each other. Like, they will foment racism whenever they can in the news. They will foment vax, anti-vax, judgment, shame, blame, anger, fear, destruction, and death. You know why? F, the first F word that drives your mitochondria, oh no, something might kill me, it grabs your attention before you can think about it. And algorithms have figured this out and marketers have figured this out. So you just don't have to fall for it. You're like, oh look, someone's trying to get me to be an extremist. Pound sand and then you just change the channel, but yeah, just turn it off and you know listen to something that matters. The, it's official Kylie says, who are you? We don't care. I've been really working on that Kylie. Do you know who you are? Um, I've been, it's, it's been a problem for me, but I would really like to ask your mom who you are because I bet she knows. Plus, I'd kind of like to meet her. What's that mean? <laughs> Did my wife get the COVID vax? Uh, you'd have to ask her. Um, I, that's her HIPAA thing she gets to say. Oh, so uh, Jay Hershier said, took a ton of vaccines when you went to India and Russia. It's probably a good idea, right? It's all about your your risk, right? So why should you... You make someone do that. The other thing that makes me really mad, guys, giving baby girls an HPV vaccine that wears off before they would ever be at risk of HPV when the HPV vaccine has risks, no benefit and some risk, that's dumb. But it sure makes a lot of money, right? So that, totally, I'm not against vaccines. I'm just like the right vaccine for the right situation at the right time for the right person. Mary, Mary says, Texas constitutional carry is passing. That's awesome. I hope that you can um, carry all sorts of cool things. I want a butter carry that lets me carry my stick of butter in a holster when I go on an airplane without them harassing me. That'd be awesome. The whole gun rights thing, I'm just gonna tell you guys, I grew up in New Mexico, walking in the desert, and I've had my own gun since I was 12. And I never shot anybody, but it has saved my life. Does that mean I'm now going to be hated by half the people? What do you know? There's no there's no hate on here. How is this possible, guys? Where's all the trolls? What happened? I'm feeling lonely. Um, the company for the mold spray, according from El Cortes, the company's called homebiotic.com, like home where you live, and then biotic, like probiotic. This is also a company I founded. It's one that makes a natural soil bacteria that eats toxic mold. Because I, the whole mission of that company is to solve the world's toxic mold problem. It's a big deal and it's making us weak and it makes us act like assholes to each other. And it's, and I know <laughs> it's still on rare occasions. If I get the wrong species, I just kind of turn to a jerk for a couple hours and it's not just me. And I document mold rage very well in the movie. We have high functioning, successful people just get taken out for a couple years before they figure it, they figure it out. 
What's happening, Luke? Says Free Soap. I love you, brother. Free Soap is all about it. What movie for Lime? Uh, MoldyMovie.com. If you guys can type these, if you're in a place where you can, I'm not going to type while I'm talking. Uh, M-O-L-D-Y Movie.com. Uh, what's my current stack for well-being right now? You got to listen to my podcast or go to DaveAsprey.com. I take 150 pills a day and I'm going to live to at least 180. And I've written a lot about it in... Uh, there's a good supplements for fasting and fast this way, my most recent one. And probably Headstrong is the most around mitochondrial, like making your brain work for nootropics. And then Superhuman is my how I'm going to live a long time. So I take the stuff in Superhuman and the stuff in Headstrong. Uh, I look cool with those glasses. Thank you, Super Brainiac. Dave for president. Oh, don't curse me. Could you imagine? Anyone who likes to get stuff done isn't going to run for president. Like, why would you do that? Like, start a company, make something that matters, and then, like, sell it to people for as low a cost as you can get away with that also lets you pay all your employees who do the work. That's how you change the world, and you share a lot of knowledge. I don't know. Maybe there are people who are politicians, uh, and I know some who are actually really good human beings working for the good guys. They're the exceptions, not the rule. <laughs> uh, for sure. Uh, the Mom Feed Podcast, How to Get Rid of Candida. I read about that in the Bulletproof Diet. Seriously, though, take fluconazole for 60 days and don't eat sugar while you're doing it, and uh, you'll probably be fine. Maybe some nice dad. And yeah, those are pharmaceuticals, guys. Sometimes pharmaceuticals are the way to go because they just work better. De Jesus, stomach issues acid for the past year. Usually it means you're short on stomach acid when you have acid reflux. And there's something called betaine, B E T A I N E H C L. You take that stuff. Uh, until you get heartburn and take baking soda when that happens. And then however much you had to take to almost give you heartburn, that's the amount you take with every meal. When you have enough stomach acid, it closes the valve at the, stop, at the top of your stomach. I had a lot of that in my early 20s. Oh, um, create health with Kelly. Look at ozone therapy, including bagging for your daughter who has uh, chronic burning and foot pain from mold exposure. It's actually really common. And just to be really clear, guys, I had Asperger's syndrome till probably about when I was 30. So I grew up with a brain that doesn't work like normal people. It actually can be completely rewired. It's really cool. Um, oh, wow, okay, I gotta answer this one thing from Greens. A lot of mold questions. You lived in a water damaged building and your condo doesn't have mold, but you have mycotoxins still. That's because you got mold in your body. You need to take antifungals, Sporinox. You can find a doctor who knows how to use Sporinox, also known as itraconazole. Oh, guys, I'm down to one bar. I'm finally in the middle of the ocean on my way over to uh, Vancouver Island from Vancouver. So I'm going to sign out before I just drop off and I can't save the chat. I hope this was fun for you. It was fun for me. Thank you for keeping me company on the ferry. And just if you're vicurious, be loud and be proud. <laughs> I love you.